In this episode of Another Zelda Podcast, Mallory and Ryan Kuhn return to talk about the different ways that they played Breath of the Wild. Hello and welcome to Another Zelda Podcast. I am David Geisler, your host for tonight, but actually not exactly. We have Mallory and Ryan co-hosting again, as they did just a couple episodes ago, and I couldn't be happier about it. Um, I have a little bit of listener feedback I want to get to, but Mallory and Ryan have been really pitching in and really becoming part of the AZP family this season, and um, I spoke with them about a possible episode idea. I loved their episode the the other week. It was actually many weeks ago. Uh, but the other, you know, I think it was only a couple episodes ago. So do you, what do you say? Do you say the other episode ago? I'm not sure how that works. Uh, but Mallory and Ryan and I were chatting and they said, well, we'd really like to do an episode on the different ways that a person could play Breath of the Wild. And I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. And apparently, you know, as I know, I know way back in the day on our fourth episode of another Zelda podcast ever, Kate and I talked a little bit about Breath of the Wild and she spoke a little bit about how she liked to play the game. I realized that I like to play it in a very different way. And then we also kind of realized that her husband, or maybe fiance at the time, but now husband, um, liked to play the game in a totally different way. I love to explore and kind of make the game my own. Kate really wanted to hit the story, and she always wanted a destination. And a lot of people, the most beautiful thing about Breath of the Wild is that every single person who plays it can play it the way they want to. They can make it be their game, so to speak. And so um, Mallory and Ryan apparently had a similar experience where... Ryan was interested in playing the game certain ways and Mallory was interested in certain certain things and they did an episode about it. I talked to them a little bit about what the format might be. They came up with some ideas and I just I uh, I listened to the episode actually just yesterday from this recording and I was as I said in the previous episode it, it's it's always fun when I'm able to be a fan of another Zelda podcast and not just um, the host. When I get to listen to content that is new to me, it's not something that I'm re-listening to because it's some pre-record or not pre-recording because it's some recording something that Kate and I did together or something like that. Okay, so um, we'll get to that in just a second. Breaths of the Wild or Breath of the Wilds. That's what it. Breaths of the Wild. That's funny. I wonder what that kind of episode would be. Breaths of the Wild. Maybe we'd be focusing on the survival mechanics of the game. Ooh, maybe Breaths of the Wild is the behind the scenes episode where we talk about how Link would get tired if he didn't eat originally. But I digress. Let's get into some listener feedback. I have one here that really warmed my heart. It's from Marie Deventer, and she messaged us on Facebook. She said, Hey, David and Kate. Hello from a university student from Belgium. Exams are always super stressful for me, so together with a professional, I have been looking for effective ways to calm down. I used to listen to the podcast before bedtime, but now I have discovered something better. Every day, I take an hour-long walk in my village, which is very calm and has a lot of farms and nature, listening to one of the Zelda episodes. Oh my goodness. It helped me a lot. And I think it's one of the best podcasts out there. Although I enjoy every one of them, my favorite episode is Link's Loves. Well, boy, that was our third episode ever in the entire show. And the one about gear and outfits. Oh, that was an episode that Kate actually hosted. I already look forward to pick up one of my games again. Being the only Zelda lover in my friend group, Kate always helps me remember that that's cool. Cool face emoji. To like video games, even as a girl. Yes. Thank you so much. For the hard work, Marie, P.S. Twilight Princess is my favorite too. A true masterpiece. Uh, I think smiley face, kind of a winky smiley face. Marie, thank you so much. I really appreciate this feedback. I think it's wonderful that you're finding your peace and you're finding your way to get through the world. I struggled with a tremendous amount of anxiety about 10 years ago, so much so that I went through a year, oh my goodness, I went through a year where I actually like had so much claustrophobic anxiety that I this is, I can't believe I'm saying this to the public, but I um, was too scared to take a car ride. I was, I was, I had like this weird claustrophobia where I couldn't even get in a car. I'd have tremendous amounts of anxiety and I found my ways to get through it. And I'm so happy that you're also finding ways to find peace in your life, Marie. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for reaching out to us. And it's really touching to also know that we have someone listening to us in Belgium and that you're, (laughs) 
I'm, I'm, I'm truly touched that in some ways uh, you listening to this show is, is, is aiding you in any way, shape or form um, in making your mornings a little bit better. My next message here is, I think this was from Instagram, um, but it might just be, you know, my screen grab here isn't showing me the social media source, but I think this is an Instagram situation. Oh, it's Messenger, I think. Anyway, you know, Instagram, Facebook, it's all the same thing these days, but nevertheless, Alex Mills says, hello guys, just wanted to leave a message saying how much I love your podcast. I'm slowly working my way through the Zelda games and I always listen to your podcast while I'm at work and also while I'm playing through the games. Keep up the great work. Love from Western Australia. We've got another Australia listener. I think I think we've got a few of them now. That's wonderful. We had Danny Reed, Danny Reed, Daniel Reed, pardon me, Daniel, Daniel Reed uh, last week messaging us from Australia and also Alex Mills here. Moving forward, Alex Mills. Oh, it was a, it was a, I think it was a direct message on Instagram here. My notes are showing me. I had a uh, reply on one of our, we have kind of a, I have been doing a light, very light spinoff uh, playlist over on our on our um, YouTube sh- uh, channel. And it's the recordings of me playing A Link to the Past. It's the recordings of me playing A Link to the Past for Kate and my, mine and Kate's um, season two finale review of A Link to the Past. And I've been, I kind of rewatch them and I narrate them as we go, even though sometimes I'm narrating the, the videos months after I actually played it, of course. Anyway, on the episode, very, very accurately titled, David Plays Dever- Desert Palace from A Link to the Past, another Zelda podcast. Um, Hi, my name is Neo, said over on YouTube. Hi, my name is Neo. This game is truly a journey, in all caps. I tried my, oh, the Desert Palace, because, you know, the Desert Palace, I remember actually when I played through it and in my narration on our cha- on my video on YouTube, I speak about how you kind of assume certain things going into a dungeon after playing many Zelda games. And you go back to what was, I think at the time, the fourth Zelda game ever, actually the third, actually the third, wow. Um, and the mechanics were different. And you have to, you have to remove a lot of your assumptions. So anyway. Uh, Hi, my name is Neo says, this game is truly a journey. I tried my hand at it uh, 10 years ago and could not get a groove. Yeah, my, my sentiments exactly. My Hi, my name is Neo. Even though my first Zelda game was Link's Awakening DX, just started this again I'm in, and I'm in love and could only imagine playing this when it originally came out. Thought of doing, an, thought of doing any more narrated playthroughs? Question mark. Even if they're short like this, it would be nice. Thanks, David. Well, yeah, I definitely have the recordings of all my dungeons being played. Season three has proven to be a very strange season, a very um, a season that requires a lot to figure out. And um, um, I have many more videos. Uh, hi, my name is Neo in Q, in Q. And I actually, on my production schedule, I have these David plays blah, blah, blah dungeon. David plays da, 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 blah, blah, blah palace. Um, and I do find I keep pushing them back one week at a time because of other priorities. We have a couple extra new shows coming out on 6.5, namely, actually, Ryan Kuhn, who's on tonight's episode, he's doing a new show called Brothers in law where he and his brother-in-law do home brewing, and we've just had a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, so I haven't been able to put those episodes out, and, and they're kind of an accessory episode anyway, but nevertheless, your comment here gives me... Um, gives me uh, even more direction to make sure that I get some of those out and uh, and, and even more drive to um, edit them, even during a time where I'm scrambling just to make some other stuff. So anyway, hi, my name is Neo. Uh, so, so, so wonderful. Thank you so much. I think we only have one left, or was that it? Oh, here we go. We have one left, and this is a comment on YouTube about Kakariko Village, which was our most recent episode, the episode just last week. Fiona Taylor says, I loved this episode, heart emoji. Breath of the Wild Wild Kakariko is my favorite version of all the village versions, as it just feels so alive, and like the NPCs, they really do have their own lives and routines. I agree completely, Fiona Taylor. Uh, She continues with, (laughs) <laughs> I also love that Impa tells Link this important history, the story of the divine beasts, how Zelda is in peril, that she is in uh, vital, that she is vital in saving, that Link is vital in saving her and defeating Ganon, and that he must hurry, and you're like, in quotes, oh shoot, sure, I'll get right on it, <laughs> just as soon as I do a couple of things, unquote. Then, instead of spending the next week 
Then, inst- then instead, you spend the next week chasing Kukos, catching fish in Impa's moat, playing hide and seek, cooking with a koku, catching fireflies, being traumatized by the great fairy, trying to steal pumpkins, climbing huge hills for no actual reason, stalking golden beetles just to see how excellent, how excited beetle gets, and generally just chilling and 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 faffing about, faffing around, smiley face, laughy face. There's so much to do, you totally forget you're meant to be saving Hyrule, lol. <laughs> Fiona Taylor. That is a sentiment I think many share. It is kind of funny how how um, in the beginning of the game, everything seems so dire. And you have to go get the beast and you have to go do the things. And um, all of a sudden, 200 hours later, 100 hours later, you find yourself doing all these extra things. But I, you know, to that point, as strong as I think the narrative is in Breath of the Wild, and I think there is a strong narrative to be had in that game, I've also often spoken about how I feel that um, in many ways, the story of Breath of the Wild is the story that every player makes for themselves. And I think that's a really, really special thing. So Fiona Taylor, wonderful, made me laugh as well when I saw this. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, let us, I'm going to use up no more time in this podcast. I'm going to cut directly over to Ryan and Mallory. Mallory kind of Heads this one up. Ryan headed up. Ryan, I suppose I suppose you could say, you know how Kate and I used to go back and forth. She'd do an episode. I'd do an episode. She'd do an episode. I'd do an episode. Ryan kind of um, hosted the first episode that my, Mallory and Ryan recorded, and Mallory took the lead on this one. So with no, without further ado, let's listen to Ryan and Mallory talk about their different experiences of playing Breath of the Wild. Thank you so much, everyone. Hi, and welcome to another Zelda podcast. I am your guest host, Mallory. And I am your other guest host, Ryan. Yay! So we're guest hosting for you guys again today because we are all still in partial lockdown, at least. And you guys didn't at least hate us. Yeah! So. <laughs> we must have done okay <laughs> last time we were on. So we are going to talk about um, Breath of the Wild, which I know it's... Old news. It's been around a few years, and there's some new things coming up, obviously, with it. But one of us here just played it and just beat it. I won't say who. <laughs> I was a little late to the party, you guys. I was like three years late <laughs> to the party. She but gets, I did. I finally beat it, like last weekend. So a- As we get news for the new stuff. So <laughs> she she comes on board towards the end. She does this a lot. So. Do I, though? Okay. I mean, we do, honestly. That we get true. involved into things very late, like TV shows <laughs> and stuff like game. that. So. Yeah. I can't hate you too much for it, I guess. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so <laughs> glad. Uh, but first, before yep. we get into our conversation too much, we are going to do a little bit of listener feedback. Um, so the first comment that we have today is actually on our last episode <laughs> that we did. So um, this was a comment on YouTube on the Top 10 Favorite Mini Bosses episode. Um, and the comment is from Paul Ack. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name, Paul. Um, But the comment says, nice episode. Love the direction this new season is going with loads of new voices, even if I do miss Kate. We We all do. We all do. Um, Just a small heads up to Mallory, who was weirded out by the Poe sisters' human names. They're actually named after the four March sisters from the novel Little Women, Nintendo, and their taste for small cultural nods. Cheers. First of all, love that the comment ends with cheers. Yes. That's like one of my favorite <laughs> phrases. Um, but yeah, with it being the four March sisters, Celeste on the show actually texted me like the day our episode aired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to tell me that same little piece of information. And it's super funny because when we recorded the episode was like right in the middle of the hype for the new Little Women movie. So I like I just oh, seen yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I just seen like 10 Little Women memes on Twitter that day <laughs> and like it still did not even occur to me. So thank you Paul for yeah. <laughs> for helping me out there a little bit with my uh my literary knowledge here. Yeah, I had no clue about that. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've seen the mo- any of the movies or I read the book, so I got nothing on that it's one. It's been like a minute. I haven't seen the movies, but I, I did read the book, but it's been like I think my mom was obsessed with, you know, the, like with the movie two back in the day. decades since yeah. I read the book. So um, all right, our next comment here was also on YouTube. Um, and this one actually has a note from from David. And it <laughs> says that he remembers Ryan tweeting about the same episode back in the day. So it's kind of cute. It's like we've come full circle full here. Full circle, yeah. yeah. Reading comments <laughs> on the same episodes we were commenting on. Um, so this was on the Zelda 64 episode of another Zelda podcast. That was season two, episode 22. Uh, and this comment comes to us from Andre Christensen. 
And it says, all caps, best episode ever. I thought that I was already savvy about Ocarina of Time's development, mm-hmm. but I learned a lot from this episode. 10 out of 10. And like five exclamation points. Yeah, I do remember that episode. It was, it was an, very, I, I love that game. It was, it's like my first real like love for game right there was that Ocarina of Time. And th- I mean, David brought that on the facts. I was, so, I, I honestly didn't even know it was originally going to be called Zelda 64. Cause I, I mean, obviously Mario 64, Madden 64, like they were playing off it a lot. Yeah. But, I never knew they were going to try to do that with Zelda as well, but it would make sense if they did. Yeah. We we'll learn something new every day when we listen to this podcast. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Um, our next comment, this is also from YouTube, and this is also on our last oh, episode, the nice. top 10 favorite mini bosses. This is fun. I like hearing comments about the last episode <laughs> I know, we did. About our own episode. It's kind of fun. Um, so this one comes to us from Benjamin Mifsud. Um, and it says, I love Zelda, and this podcast is perfect for Zelda fans. I've been binging it. We also binged it when we found oh, yeah. it, so we feel you oh, on yeah. this Our one, trip Benjamin. down Florida. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I ever played was Twilight Princess, but I was young and dumb and couldn't get past Orden Village. <laughs> but now, since COVID, I've been at home on a mission to play them all. So far, I've played Ocarina of Time, Skyward Sword, Breath of the Wild. Um, I'm playing Twilight Princess at the moment. Oh, oh Link's Awakening. Sorry, I missed one. Um, which has been amazing. Easily my favorite game. Uh, can't wait for the next episode. Yeah, it's it. When <laughs> I have, there are plenty of games that I have that um, oh yeah, Thor make an appearance for those watching. <laughs> for the uh, <laughs> Patreon folks. But there, I think every almost every game that I've ever played, there's always a moment where it's like I'm stuck and I can't get past this part, and then I yeah. stop playing and I come back to it. And I'm like, oh, why? Did I have a struggle with this? And it's not even the Zelda games. Like I've had ton, tons of games like that where I'm yeah. stuck. Well, we talked get... about it in our mini boss episode where <laughs> in Wind Waker, I was stuck at the mini boss of the Dark oh, yes, Knight for yeah. like years. And then now I play it and it's like, but how did I get stuck? <laughs> it's not that hard, but it is like yeah. you get stuck in like a mental rut and you can't figure out how to beat it. Um, yeah, it totally happens. So um, we only have one more piece of listener feedback that we're going to talk about, and then we will dive right into breath. Yeah. Um, But this one is kind of fun. So um, if you missed it online, so the uh, AZP blog writers pulled together uh, and coordinated, and we uh, all got David a little gift uh, earlier (laughs) this summer. So because David's been doing a heck of a lot of work. Yeah. uh, Both at, you know, his day job and for AZP and 6.5 Media. And like he's He's, just been a very, very busy busy. man. Um, So we all got together and we got him a little gift. It's like a little gift box that had um, carving of like a Wind Waker style. It was, I think it was one of the stained glass windows. actually. Yeah, from Wind Waker on the front of the box. And then inside the box was an AZP scotch glass and some scotch rocks. Um, sorry, our cat is very much in the shot again. Um, but anyways, so David did like a whole unboxing video when he got it in the mail on online. And so this comment comes from Facebook where that video was posted. Um, and it's a comment from Brandon Wright and it says, oh, wow, that's awesome. So jealous of the stones and the phenomenal (laughs) glass as well. You totally deserve it for all the hard work you do. Smiley face, heart emoji, rock on Dave. And we agree completely. Yes. Rock on Dave indeed. <laughs> yeah, Dave Dave has done phenomenal things. Uh, he's helping me with a couple of things as well. Um, and I, I give the man credit. I, oh, yeah. I, I don't know if I could do that. I mean, in college when I had more energy maybe because I was able <laughs> to like, you know, stay up till two o'clock in the morning and yeah. play video games or Can't party and then get up the next day and do a full day. I'm in bed by nine, like not, not even like exaggerating. I'm in bed by nine Hard because scene. I can't do it. And granted, <laughs> we get up early because we have work and a new puppy that we have um, generally wants to get up pretty early as well and, be, and yeah. obviously needs to be taken out. But even prior to puppy, we were up early because of work and I, I think our internal clocks are just yeah. set for that now. But anyways, we, yeah, props to David for kicking major butt. Yes. Um, but anyways, that is all the listener feedback that I have. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm going to do like a little intro for how the conversation's going to go. Um, so like Ryan said in the beginning, I just beat Breath of the Wild mm-hmm. for the very first time. Um, 
he three years late. And so... <laughs> but I've been to three times at this point. Yeah, too, I know, I know. So what we're going to do is kind of a compare and contrast because he was watching me play and realized that I was doing a lot of things very differently from how he did it. And we thought that was one of the really fun things about Breath of the Wild is that anyone who plays can do it totally differently. Um, there's so many different paths that you can take to lead you to the end of the game. Mm -hmm. um, so we have kind of like a almost interview slash conversation format planned here mm -hmm. where Ryan has a list of questions, which I have not seen. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I may sound foolish because I have not been able to prepare. Um, but we thought it'd be more genuine that way. We're like, I'm just responding off the cuff. Um, but I see you staring at my list right now. So. I know. I can't even read it. It's too far away. Remember, I need glasses. Um, <laughs> but um, so he's going to ask some questions and then I'm going to, you know, talk about how I did things and then we'll, we'll chat about how we did some some things different. Yep. Um, and then we'll talk about some of our favorite parts of the game and some and things we favorites. liked about it and some least favorite parts <laughs> and just, you know, kind of a fun free will and discussion on Breath of the Wild. So... I'll take it over. I'm going to yeah. do some gotcha journalism here. Gotcha journalism. Because you don't know anything that's coming your way. I don't. I don't. So let's start right off the bat. Okay. What took you so <laughs> long to play this game? Now, I didn't just beat it, but play it. Because I can get it. Like, you could probably play this for 100 plus hours and still not even actually beat the game. There's so much to do. Yeah. But, like, playing the game. Well, you remember when we first got the Switch, which we got the Switch when it first came out, yep. got it in a package, like a little bundle with Breath of the Wild, like we had it. <laughs> and all the DLCs too. And yeah, we have everything. Um, and I did play it a little bit when we first got it, like right after you beat it for the first time. Um, I do remember, yep. Yeah. And I just didn't make it very far. I didn't, I didn't like it, which felt like... Um, like a secret I needed to keep. In no, the you Zelda really, yeah, I would say you that never I didn't like Breath of the Wild because, yeah. like, everyone loves Breath of the Wild. How did I not like Breath of the Wild? Um, and I think what made me finally play it and enjoy it and beat it was the fact that I just played Animal Crossing. <laughs> I will explain. Uh, of course, you, of course, you bring up Animal Crossing. I know. I love Animal Crossing. Um, but no, I'll explain. So when I was playing Breath the first time, I was trying to play it like I would play Twilight Princess. Yeah, you're doing linear. Yes. I was just trying to, here's my objective. I'm going straight there. Uh, if I come across any sort of enemy, I have to fight it and defeat it. <laughs> And then I'm going to, you know, just progress through the game as it goes. So I'm going straight for the Zora area, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. And I hated it because I kept coming across enemies and I would just get killed all the time. All the time. All I did in this game was die. <laughs> so, so it wasn't very fun. I couldn't get very far and I didn't have any of the like powers. I didn't even, I think I made it to the first Divine Beast, which in, in that playthrough I did whatever the... Elephant one is named. Oh, Rudo. Is it? Uh, yeah. Ba the, the Boss Rudo, something Bob like that. Rudo. The one that's with the, the Zora. Um, but I just, I wasn't enjoying it. So then, coming off the heels of Animal Crossing, where the entire point of the game is just to kind of run around mm -hmm. and do whatever you want, <laughs> I started playing Breath of the Wild the same way. Where I just, like, wasn't trying to save Hyrule. I wasn't trying to like do anything in particular. Uh, if I come across an enemy, I'm just going to run away from it because I'm trying to, you know, I would just run towards the black spaces on the map and roam around in the darkness trying to find a tower. <laughs> um, I And I had a lot more fun with that method of playing through. So I think that's what took me so long is that I was trying to play it like a normal, classic, traditional Zelda game. And it is not. And I tried telling you this, actually. Mm -hmm. I remember, because we played Skyrim way back in the day. Mm -hmm. And we did not play it Zelda way either. We we did everything else. Yeah. And we did all the side... I don't know, because there's hundreds oh, of thousands yeah. of those, We would too. still be playing if we were trying um, to do all the side But missions. we did a, a ton of the side missions. We got to all the different guilds and all the different things you can do as well. 
and like got to the bad guy. And I remember my buddy playing Skyrim on Slight Tangent and he struggled hard with that last one. And I told her that I'm like, I watched him play this. It's hard. And then we got to it and it was like the easiest, the thing. easiest thing in the world. Because we were so over leveled. Yes. Well, yeah. But it, to me, Skyrim was just like a totally different game. And and now how I played Breath in the end was mm-hmm. way more like we ended up playing Skyrim yes. where we just kind of wandered around the world and did whatever looked interesting to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's how Breath is designed to be played. But it was just not at all how it didn't click in your head because you right. all most. I mean, I actually, I'm pretty sure every Zelda game is linear in some way, shape, or form. There are some that branch off, but like you were saying, yeah. Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess is very linear, super linear, and that's so, one of my favorite games. Yeah, so I like that. And even like it's probably the path. least linear linear game is probably either Ocarina or Wind Waker, where like you can go to the other islands in Wind or Waker. Majora's, you can do. The oh yeah, Majora's well, in any order yeah, you please. True, as basically, well, well but sort like, of. Those games are are still linear in some way, shape, or form. They just have a little bit of adventure that right. you don't have to do either. And I think Breath of the Wild expanded it on that, like tenfold, on all these different side missions and the shrines and the Korok seeds and everything else. So yeah, and I think that's what really got you was that you finally accepted that you didn't have to do it linear. Right. Well, and <laughs> the biggest thing was accepting that I don't have to fight every enemy that I come across. <laughs> yeah, you did struggle a lot. <laughs> Seriously, because I would just like the first time I played it through, I would be running through the wilderness and I would find like a, you know, a little village thingy of bacoblins mm-hmm. and I would try to defeat them all, but well, they kicked my butt because all I have is tree branches or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would get frustrated after trying to beat them like six times in a row and dying. And yeah. I would be like, I don't want to play anymore. Mm-hmm. So. All right, so my next question is, what was the first Divine Beast you did? So, I, like I said, I made it my mission this playthrough to just have it be, Link is exploring the world. <laughs> We're not trying to save Hyrule. We don't care about the plot. We're just running around and playing whatever we want. So, the first Divine Beast I did, and the only Divine Beast I did for probably, like, my thir- first, like, 30 hours of playthrough <laughs> was the um, Vametto, the, uh, the Rito, Rito one. Because yeah. I just I just wanted Rivali scale. That was literally the only reason I did it, is I wanted to be able to do the jump up in the sky and fly around. <laughs> um, so that was the first one I did. I actually I ended up being one of my favorite beasts um, in the end. I liked that one a lot. But... Uh, what, what was the first beast that you did during your first playthrough? My first playthrough, I did the Zora. Yeah. Um, the game kind of leads you that yeah, way, it I think, does. a little. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then, of course, other times I played, I, I I think the second time I did the same one, and then the third time I did um, Gerudo, actually. Uh, yeah. I went to the camel. Whew. Yeah. Well, at that point, <laughs> I will say I, I was not a f- fan of the um, Ganon light there the lightning blade the lightning or thunder blight, blight or thunder, thunder blight, blight yeah. yeah and i struggled you can ask her like i struggled hard with it so um did I. but <laughs> it's a hard on the one. third gameplay and now knowing how to do a lot of things it didn't have an issue yeah. so well that actually leads to my question would you change the way you the first one you do so knowing what each each divine beast gets you yeah. the, all different powers would you change your order or would you still go um to Rito first and get that the jumping and flying part. So I would still definitely go to Rito first okay. because Rivali's Gale is necessary for functioning in Hyrule. Well, how what was the other game. three? How did you do the other three? Let's yeah, get that. I was gonna say I would change the order of the others I did because I did the Rito one first and then I did none for like oh, yeah. I said like thirty hours of <laughs> gameplay, and then I went and I did um, the elephant one. I did the one with the Zoras. Zora, next. okay. And then I did the Goron one, the Salamander. Okay. And then I did the Thunderblight one, the, the, the Gerudo. Gerudo one last. Um, in another playthrough, I think I would I would obviously still do the Rito one first. Mm-hmm. Because, again, without Rivali's Gale, life is sad and meaningless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I think that I would do um, the Gerudo one second. Okay. Because of all the powers... Well, I didn't use Urbosa's Fury at all in this playthrough because I got it so late yeah. in the game. I got Urbosa's Fury like pretty much right before I went mm-hmm. to face Ganon. And I did end up using it 
somewhere in the castle mm. um, on my way there. But that was the first time I used it. And I was like, holy crap, this is super powerful. Yes. And I'm, why have I not been <laughs> using this more? It's awesome. Um, but yeah, I think I would get a lot of good use out of that if I had it earlier on in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would do the one where you get Mifa's Grace, mm-hmm. the Zora one next, because that saved my butt on a number of occasions because <laughs> I tend – to get a little cocky <laughs> and rush into situations and just kind of try to hack slash through stuff that I really can't hack slash through and then I get killed. Yeah, um, we've all been there. Yeah, so that's nice to have Mifa's grace. And then I would do the salamander last because, as you know, Ryan, yeah. <laughs> I, I am not very good at the combat parts of video games. I love the puzzles and I'll play the combat parts and they're fun. But I'm not very good at them. So like the whole like <laughs> I'm going to hold up my shield and block someone else's sword uh, doesn't tend to occur to me when I'm playing. So I don't have my shield up that often. So I didn't have Daruk's protection activated ever. Yeah. <laughs> once I had it, like I think I, I activated it on accident once and was like, what's this glowing bubble around me? Well, I remember <laughs> watching you do like a, a, a test of strength. I forgot what, which one it was, but um, whether it was minor or major and like you're just going up against it and you don't have your shield up and everything. I'm like, what are you doing right now? Yeah, it was a major <laughs> test of strength. But I never have my shield up when I'm, I guess I do a little bit in the major test of strengths when it does the like, pew, 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 where it shoots the like bunch of little, whatever. Little beams, yeah. Little beams of light at you. I'll try to block those sometimes. But yeah, pretty much I'm just going in with the sword. And I'm and trying you don't to even do the uh, the backflips or whatever to try to get the flurry I can't attacks. Get the timing on those right. <laughs> I got them sometimes, but yeah, no, I pretty much just rush in and use just brute force and some ignorance. <laughs> 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 just go for it. Um. Okay. So next question. Wait, you didn't oh, answer. Would what? you change your order? I did. What's change. the ideal order? I guess for you. For me, you played it three times. Because first, the first two times I did it the same way. So I did the Zora's domain. I did Goron, Rito, and um. Grew oh my up. gosh! So you did the so first, much game without times. Ravali's Gale. That's horrifying. Yeah, and then actually, the last time I played through, I did um. Gerudo first because I wanted Obosus Fury. Yeah. Um, to, once once I figured that out, like you were saying, like once I figured it out, I'm like, oh, this is a game I changer. I need this. Yeah. It when you are in a mess of bad guys around you and you know you just don't have the power to do it, like it's like having unlimited shock arrows around you. Yeah. And you just sh- like hold it, shock everyone around you, and then pff, go you at run it. Run away or go at oh, yeah. it or yeah, whatever. Um, and then I think I did. I think I actually just did it backwards so i did rito next then i went goron and i went mifa's grace okay so um i was torn because like when the first couple times i did it and i you know run into a lionel or something like that something big um they would kill me very easily and mifa's grace saved me every single time so um again don't mind our cat he's now above me in the window (laughs) window um but he should be good for now there for a while um, but <laughs> it, I was very torn. Like I kept, even at third playthrough, I wanted to still go to Mifa's and get, I'll go over there and get Mifa's grace because it saves me. And then even the Goron one, like having that shield, I was very defensive and everything else, um, of how I was doing everything, um, and how I was playing again, our cat. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so I decided to go more on offensive the last time yeah. I played through and then got a Rosa Shuri. Like I said, it, it saves me more than, than anything else. Like even against Guardians, against the uh, regular Oh, Bulkins. it works on Guardians too? It works on everything. Oh my gosh. Now, it I damages it everything, yeah. yeah. Um, the only thing that does suck is that when you're doing like the um, Trial of Swords, you don't get them. Oh, well, yeah, because it's like when you're in a shrine, you yeah, don't have them. exactly. Yeah, so. that makes sense. Uh, okay, so my next question is, and I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Did you do any of the memories? No. <laughs> I didn't do a single one. I I have seen the cutscenes of all of them on YouTube. Okay. And I saw most of them when I was watching your playthroughs. Yep. Um, I forgot about them, to be completely honest with you. I totally forgot that I was supposed to be looking <laughs> for them. Because like I said, I didn't try to play through the game. Mm-hmm. I really was just exploring like my whole thing was just wander off into the wilderness until i hear the shrine beeping noise and then try to find whatever shrine is nearby and Mm -hmm. you know grab any koroks i happen to find and um yeah no i did none of the memories not literally not a single one except for the ones that you get like 
the little flashbacks when you go to when you go to the yeah, yeah. like you yeah. see me a statue yeah. or whatever like yeah, yeah those those ones i got obviously because yeah. <laughs> you, you okay. just get them by default um but you got all the memories didn't you when you played through i did and i'm sorry for anyone who's a perfectionist i cheat because <laughs> they are hard to find especially the first yeah. couple the first playthrough i wanted to get that i'm like the, like i'm looking at the picture and i'm at where where i'm thinking it is i'm like where the heck is it and i'm not even close where it is so yeah well and also too i think that the reason why i didn't do the memories was because it was my rule that i wasn't cheating okay i didn't let myself cheat I and think you did a couple well times. at the very end yeah. and i was gonna say that was when i knew that i needed to just go find ganon and beat the game because mm-hmm. i was getting the impulse to cheat at the end yeah and that's when i was like okay i must not be fully enjoying this anymore if i'm trying to find shortcuts to how to do stuff mm-hmm. so let me just go fight ganon so okay. um what about we talked about that we have them what about anything with the dlcs so i didn't do anything purposely with the dlc <laughs> okay i did like find a bunch of chests that had the like ex on them the purple okay. chests i found a bunch of those just wandering around the world yeah um but yeah, any DLC stuff that I happened to do was completely accidental. Okay. <laughs> so you didn't get the bike? Nope, I did not get the bike. I did and, not end up getting the and bike. And I'm pretty sure you didn't do any of the extens- uh, extensions of the powers. No, I so. did not go to the shrine or the shrines, the divine beasts again. Okay. I did not do that again. I honestly don't even know how you would trigger that. I think it's it's just go there. You find um uh what's his name? What's the Rito that flies around playing the Cass? Cass, yeah. Okay. You'll find Cass. He's kind of leads them and everything. Okay. Are you intrigued by it at all? Because I I I, I know we talked about it a little bit, or like you get like a quicker recharge. Yeah. On, on the powers, I would be intrigued by doing. Well, here's the thing, and I'm sh- assuming at some point we'll talk about the Divine Beasts more. Yeah. Okay. So I won't talk about that a ton, but there were a few that I just hated. Like I didn't enjoy <laughs> any part of the beast. I didn't enjoy any part of the lightning blight or, well, that was a spoiler. Thunder blight. I hated the thunder blight. Hated it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so I wouldn't, it wouldn't be worth it to me to put myself through that again at like a harder level. No, thank you. But like a few of them, like the, the Rito one, I did enjoy the beast, mm-hmm. like the puzzles and stuff. I really enjoyed inside the beast. And then the, the Ganon that you fought the wind blight, um, wasn't too bad. It was just kind of a fun boss fight to me. So that one I would do again, um, because the beast wasn't too bad and because, Rivali's Gale is super useful uh, <laughs> and like my favorite power of all time. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, we actually just prepared this part. Um, shrines and Korok seeds. Oh, yes. <laughs> we actually went through and I, I actually went into my, my newest game. So it's not the first time I played it, but my, but you beat my it, current right? game. You I beat it. Yeah. It was okay. completely beat. Um, and counted or because it shows you how many shrines and how many Korok seeds you found overall when you're doing your loading screens how many shrines did you find okay so i only got 87 of the shrines but again i didn't cheat i didn't cheat at all guys so yeah that was just me running running around the world organically mm-hmm. finding 87 so i think there's like 120 some total yeah uh for shrines i did 86 but Ooh. that includes a lot of the dlcs um, which do count as extra shrines as well. So, well, and is it possible that I might have found some of the DLC shrines and just not known it? <laughs> Maybe, but like some of them are also involved with that replay of the of the, oh, okay. of the divine beast as well. So, got it. I didn't do that. And this is the the fun one. How many Korok seeds did you find? So we knew I I was gonna win this. I I already know Ryan's <laughs> number on this one. Um, I found 133 Koroks, which I know there's like 900. So I know 133 is not that impressive. Yeah, but the max you can actually get for like expanding your belt is like not, 200. Yeah, and some, so you're I think. Like, you're right. You're pretty much right there. I mean, I'm like 70 shy at least. But like we were joking, or he was joking when he would watch me play through that I was like the Korok whisperer because I would just like <laughs> go to a location and be like, "There's going to be a Korok here," and then there would be one, and he's like, "How did you know?" And I'm like. Because there's a random rock sitting on the top of a mountain. Why would it be there? I'm going to pick it up. There's a Korok under there. She does it in real life as well now. So <laughs> we'll be walking our dog and she'll look at a tree and there'll be like a weird like like hole, cork hole missing in the tree. And she'll be like, if there was a pot in there. <laughs> you could shoot it you and there would be a Korok there be a Korok in there. Because <laughs> that was we a literal were, one in the game. So. If we were in Hyrule. Yes. There would be a Korok here. So my sadness with this is I'm at 43 seeds. So pathetic. But... <laughs> Again, like I, 
I, I will say this on this playthrough, I did not fast travel as much. I, when I, the first two playthroughs, I fast traveled when I needed to get somewhere. Like, cause I was, I was very oriented of, okay, I'm on this mission. Even if it's a side mission, I need to go here. This is travel. Let's just get it over with. I know David, David has said this before where like he loves traveling as well, which is why I got inspired. You know what? I'm like, I'm going to travel as much as I can. Yeah. Just walk and walk through and thankfully didn't get attacked. I knew where guardians were at that point. So like I knew where kind of to avoid at that point too. (laughs) Yeah, you did not. You you ran into a couple. Um, And we'll talk about that later. I do actually have a question for that. Um, So my next question is, and this is going to be for both of us going back and forth. Something you did that you know I didn't do or you think I didn't do. Ooh, I don't know what you've done or haven't done. Um, or think. Think I didn't do. I mean, like did, maybe you a do, shrine, did you like do maybe the a mazes? Shrine. I did one maze and that's it. Okay. Because I did all the mazes. Um, and I, I thought they were super fun. I honestly really enjoyed the mazes. Um, they were – I mean, it was – I think I got to where you get sometimes where it's just like it's so complicated and annoying. I just like I'm done. Let me get let me get this. I'm already here. I'm gonna do this one, and I'm not doing the rest of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I can see that because I forget which maze it was, but um, it was like a jail almost looking thing, mm-hmm. and I I did get to a point where I almost tried to cheat, um, but at that point <laughs> I was like so lost in the middle of the maze that i couldn't even fathom how i would cheat you know what i mean like i I could no walkthrough could save me i was already lost um (laughs) and i did end up just like randomly wandering around and found my way out of it so i i get where you might get frustrated and not like those mazes but i did like those um i also i don't think you got the full climber armor no i did not i got the the main tunic part okay so i did get the the full climber armor as well um which was awesome. So awesome. I also, like when I was doing my playthrough, and this is probably maybe a question, I tended more toward going for stamina versus hearts. Mm-hmm. Yep, you did. Uh, so I had the climber armor, Rivali's Gale, and like three full circles of stamina for most of the game. <laughs> so I could go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a couple things I didn't do. Um and I'll probably say, I mean, there's a lot of DLCs, but I'll stay away from those in the memories. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that you did or didn't do. Well, I didn't do the Trial of the Sword. That's true, but that's a, that. that's a DLC. That's a DLC, yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, I'd probably say you never beat a Lionel. Oh, you know, you did beat one Lionel. I did beat one, but yeah. it was a red Lionel. It was, like, the easiest yeah. kind of Lionel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and did you ever actually beat a Guardian that, that walked? No. Okay. So not a moving one. Yeah. The in the ground ones, I beat a few of them. Yeah. Well, they're, they're a lot easier. Yeah, they are. Beat. That's why I beat and them. And what about an aerial one? Did you ever beat one of those? Oh heck no! <laughs> <laughs> I ran away from those. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. So the that's that's the first round of questions on really how you played the game, and that's we're gonna take a quick break. But like the, when we come back, we're gonna talk about more about personal feelings about the game and, and more like that. We did a few in that first part, but like. We're going to dive a little more deeper into... Like opinion-based stuff. Opinion-based stuff, yeah. Your personal feelings on how things were. So we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to do something with this cat before he destroys (laughs) everything. Um, And we'll see you soon. All right. Bye, guys. Hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly must have been put on by a production. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. (laughs) Our library of precious episodes. (laughs) 
You're a pirate Smeagol. Okay. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. Hi, I'm Ryan. And I'm Mike. And And we we are are brothers-in-law. We both love beer and are amateur homebrewers. Wait, so does that make us... (laughs) Brothers-in-law? I believe so. Every episode, we will talk about aspects of beer and homebrewing. But nothing super technical because we're learning this too. So join us as we sit down together and dive into something beer-related. Whether it's a little field research, tasting a certain beer style, or beers from a specific brewery, Talk about our experiences brewing beer at home, including our own solo brews, as well as themed competitions we'll set up along the way. We will also talk about some of our favorite aspects of brewing, like hops, extra ingredients, building our brew cave, and more. And of course, our own misadventures that have happened along the way. So, if you like beer, are home brewing already, or if you have an interest in home brewing and don't know where to start, join us on Brewers in Law Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to follow us on Twitter at Brewers in Law and check out our website, BrewersInLaw.com. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Welcome back to our discussion of Breath of the Wild. The tale of two players. The tale of two players. I like it. There you go. That's a that's a tagline, David. Yeah. That. <laughs> so we did in the first half of the episode. We talked a lot about um, like strategy and how we did our different playthroughs. And then this half, um, I guess a lot of Ryan's questions are going to be more focused on opinions and mm-hmm. feelings about the game. So I know everyone has their opinions on certain things about this game. Some. Mostly positive, I'd say. Actually, most are positive. And there are some negative opinions on things. Um, but I want to get your um, your feelings on it. So okay. first thing, we're going to dive into fun, fun facts. Oh, boy. All right. So how well did you fare Oh boy. against these following things? Probably not well. <laughs> Lionel. <sighs> Lionel's. I like not the first one you beat. The first one you you the first one you the saw. The first one I saw was the first one I beat. Oh really? The okay. Well, saw up close. Okay. Because you <laughs> you realize my method of traversing the world was to climb mountains and then sail around. There are so, some that are on top of mountains and you don't realize until you well, get there and I they see you. Didn't see any of those. <laughs> and but I like, actually did save you against one in the castle because you almost ran right into well, that one, a savage yeah. one that's in there. You yeah, you helped me cheat there. You just yelled at me <laughs> until I stopped and I was like, what? Um but no, so I saw a few, I think, like just sailing over them mm-hmm. and like would be like, oh I was gonna land there, but let me not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the first one I actually like saw up close was the one um, that you have to get the lightning the shock oh, yes. arrows from, mm-hmm. which for the record, I didn't realize that you don't have to do that part if you already have shock arrows. So like by the time <laughs> I got- you did that, it was like the second to last one you did. Yeah. By the time I got to that point in the game, I had already like, I'd already been playing for like 30 some hours. Yeah. I had like been to Gerudo Town and I had bought, I probably had 50 shock arrows in my like little pack before. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, let me go. I thought it was just like a prerequisite for the mission. I thought you had to do it. Um. So I did go do it. Um, I tried to sneak. So I took a sneaky (laughs) potion because that was the thing. Oh, well, we can talk about that more later, too. I'll ask you about it. Um, But that was the thing that I did a lot that I know you didn't do a lot. I did a lot of cooking and elixirs and all of that. Um, But I took a sneaky elixir right before and I was like starting to sneak in. And then the cut scene happened. Where it like triggers, if you remember this part, guys, where like it triggers where it's like, oh, look, there's a Lionel here. It's like, no kidding. I knew there was a Lionel here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then it moved me to a different spot and he saw me and I was like, rude, Nintendo. That was not what I was going to do. I was planning on just sneaking around and not catching his attention. Um, but yeah, that's not how it went down. So I just kind of went brute force with it. I went at him and like tried to dodge but i could never get the timing on the flurry strike <laughs> i don't think i got a single flurry strike against him so i just ended up running around like a maniac and then smacking him with whatever weapon i had out i forget what it was it's like a flame blade maybe mm-hmm. um whenever he got close enough to me for me to hit him and i took i stopped 
and he was very kind and patient and waited for Link to eat like five or six steak dinners <laughs> during this particular combat. Um, so yeah, I ate a lot of food. Okay. And I did end up defeating the Lionel, um, which was cool because then I could just run around and get all the shock arrows without having to worry about him. But then that was the only Lionel I fought in the whole game after that. I did try to pop a few with like bomb arrows from afar and be like, oh, I'm up on top of this mountain. He's all the way down there. I'm mm-hmm. going to just pop him with a bomb arrow and then I'll just shoot him with arrows until he's done. And no, he could pop me with an electricity arrow all the way from the bottom of a mountain when I was on top those of line, it. Those savage line of bows. Yeah. No, so I ended up just running away from all of the rest of them. <laughs> How about you? Um, you were pretty good against Lionels. I Well, I got better. <laughs> I got better, as they say in uh, uh, Monty, Monty Python. Python. <laughs> um the first one I, I did, the first playthrough, was that same one because I started yeah. that, that um, Divine Beast first. And I had to get those shock arrows because it was the first time shock right. arrows really came in the thing. And I snuck around as best I can. Um, if you get more closer to the top of the peak, you can get away from him. He can't get to you and you just kind of hide. He forgets you're there. Object permanence is not a thing, apparently. No, um, I guess not. And, they, and then I would sneak down and grab some more and run away. I tried fighting him the first time, and I just wasn't good at it. <laughs> um, and again, I tried doing the flurry strikes. I actually... Um, I don't know what I did, but I, in, I I stunned him, and then apparently you can hop on him and ride him as long as what? your stamina. And you have a good stamina, you can ride him and hit him from above, like, on, while on top of him, too. So with you and your stamina, you probably yeah, have done I that. Probably, well, I would never have gotten that close <laughs> <laughs> to be able to, to jump on top of a level. Yeah. But um, other than that, like I, I, like I said, I got better at fighting them. That savage one that you, I, I saved you from in the um, in the castle area because the gates drop down. Yeah. You have one of those little things that spit the, the, the skull heads at you as well. Oh, my gosh. Like, you got to take that out real quick while he's attacking you. No, thank you. And they're tough. And even doing the uh, Trial of Swords, you face them and everything. So, um, yeah, no, sorry about that. If anyone um, that's watching the video version, our cat is taking a very detailed bath right behind um, us. So, yeah, they, they they were terrifying at first. I honestly would put them as a harder bad guy than the Guardians. Yeah, well, they run at you. I guess the Guardians kind of do, too. Well, you, well, depends on your Guardian. But, yeah, like the Guardians, yeah. you can get away, I feel, easier than compared to the Lionel. Like, yeah. Lionels are just... I think like, they're faster. They're just, yeah. I think they're... Individual attacks aren't as deadly as the Guardians, but they're faster. Yeah. You can yeah. get away from a Guardian laser beam pretty qu- easily, depending on how you dodge. Yeah. Running-wise, it's a little more difficult, but, like, yeah. you can get behind a tree. Right. And then he, you can, like, kind of dodge and get away from him. A Lionel will come at you and destroy the tree. Right. 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 <laughs> um, fire, breath, and all. Um, next one would be a Hinox. I think you fought a Hinox. Remind me what the Hinoxes are. Those are the big things with the one eye. Oh, yes. No, I you did. You did the Hinox Brothers. I did that. Yeah, I was going to say I did that one shrine where you had to defeat all three Hinoxes. Which I did not do. Actually. Oh, well, hey, there's something I did that you did not do. Um, So I did pretty well against them. That was Those three were the only Hinoxes that I mm-hmm. fought in the whole game. I tended to just run away from them um, just because I didn't feel like dealing with them when mm-hmm. I came across them. Um, My method for Beating those was to climb up on a pillar or a tree or something nearby <laughs> and pop them with bomb arrows. I bought – I I had a ton of money in this game. Like yeah, you I did. I had like thousands and thousands of rupees all the time because, again, I was just running around exploring. So I was finding a ton of gemstones and then just selling them. I had so much money in this game. So I would always buy – just buy out the stock of any bomb arrows I would find. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I would just kind of stay up top and pop them with bomb arrows until – they were defeated. Okay. Um, and it took a while for some of them. It mm-hmm. would have been probably easier to run in and hit them with the sword, but then I, I would be at risk of getting hit by them. So <laughs> <laughs> I took the coward's way out. Yeah. Um, my first one was in my first play, I did the island the island challenge. I forgot what it is. Oh, where you start off with nothing and I you have to work your way that. out. I ended up quitting. I didn't, um, I didn't beat that part. And I... Did it? I I assume is the traditional way. Pop him in the eye. He falls down. You hit him with whatever like main melee weapon you have until he starts blocking your your shot. Yeah. And you just have to maybe hopefully get lucky, or you kind of like dodge his attacks and whatever, or just as you say, just pop him with bomb arrows right. or any kind of arrows because you still do damage. Yeah. Um, the big one, 
guardian. And just we'll do a regular guardian uh, since you've apparently avoided all aerial guardians. Yeah, true. I I honestly think that the regular guardians are still the hardest of the three. I think aerial guardians are easier to avoid because you just got to stay out of the light that they shine down. Yeah. So I think I remember watching your first interaction with a guardian. So that was so my first interaction with a guardian was when I was at um, the Akala Tech Lab. Oh, in the ground, in ground mm-hmm. one. Oh, I'm talking about a walking one. Oh, oh, I didn't fight any walking ones. Oh, you did. I remember watching you be destroyed by him. <laughs> oh, I believe you. When was that? Um, you had just got me for grace, actually. Oh well, that's and good. <laughs> it was you were going across the middle part of the plains, which is where gar- most guard- walking guardians are. Yeah. Oh, was this the part when I went up the waterfall on the side of the castle before? Nope. Oh, I no. think you're on your way there to do something like that. But okay. like you were, you were by a river. And he was just chasing after you. You could not get away. And then you die, but you had you just got me for grace. You didn't know. And it saved you. And I think you ended up just fast traveling the heck out of there because it was just, you couldn't get away. And I just kept telling you, like, I got the legs. Sweep the legs. Right. Sweep the legs. <laughs> sweep the legs. Yeah. No, I, I believe you. And that definitely sounds like me. Um, I don't remember that part at all. <laughs> but yeah, I, I did not fight a single walking or flying guardian. I just ran away from all of those yeah. ones that I found. And I did I did encounter a few other walking ones that I would just Rivali's gale. <laughs> and then when they would shoot at me, I would drop yep. so that it would miss me. Yep. And then I would just run um, until I could like climb up something or run around a corner or whatever yeah, yeah. Um, and get away from them. Um. What is your favorite part of this game? Well, you didn't tell me about your guardian experience. Oh, my guardian. Yeah. I keep, I keep getting away from you these keep, questions. Yeah, you just started avoiding answering. Um, My first guardian experience was probably about the same as yours, except I had no Mephis Grace. I had really no hearts, and I thought I could do it. Kind of like how you said you yeah, the very first time you played. Yeah, I did my first playthrough, like, yeah. I could take this down. I have a decent sword and shield. Nope. I have a traveler's sword. I, and I have a, <laughs> a, a regular bow with arrows. Yeah, I can take them. No, no. I mm-hmm. did not go well for me. And because I made the decision to venture into that main uh, field that's in the middle, in which there are memories in that area and everything. So, like, you do have to go in there. But, like, I like I would sneak around like no other after that. But, like, the first time I went in there, saw it, and it just utterly destroyed me because <laughs> I, t- I kept being stubborn about it and they're like i'm gonna get him this time i'm gonna get him nope i'm gonna get him this nope and so i gave up and started avoiding them like the plague You're um until smart. i realized the ways to beat them and everything else so yeah it was it was not fun no no um <laughs> what is your favorite part of this game like of of all all the things that happen with this game what is your favorite part My favorite part, well, I'm going to, maybe this is not exactly what you're asking, but like the part of the game where I had the most fun was right after I got Rivali's Gale when a lot of the map was still blank. I had so much fun at that part of the game because that whole section, all I did was run into the blank spots of the map where mm-hmm. it was still black, where I hadn't, you know, gotten the tower yet. Uh, and just charged into the darkness with like no plan. Yeah. Um, it was super fun. I would just run around and I would find Koroks and I would find shrines. And there was, you know, the world was uh, rife with shrines at that point <laughs> in the game because I hadn't been there yet. Right. So like yeah. I would always have a beep, 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 beep. And I would just follow it along until I found the shrine. Um Running away from like 99% of enemies <laughs> and just um, kind of just wandering and exploring. Um, to me, that was the most fun part of the game. Now, if we're talking about like actual plot parts of the game that I like enjoyed the most, mm-hmm. probably the Wind Blight Ganon. Okay. That was probably my favorite, like. I'm in a combat situation. I'm doing something plot oriented right now. Mm-hmm. Um, that was probably my favorite part of the game that met those those criteria. Yeah, uh, I would say, plain wise, I I just loved the world. I mean, it was yeah. such a beautiful, beautiful gameplay. Just gorgeous with Art changing style. of weather, changing of time. Everything was just so beautifully done in this game. Plot wise, I gotta go with the DLCs. I loved replaying against the Divine Beasts and doing it as 
because you play as you still, but you got what the champion had. So like when you're oh, doing okay. when you're doing the win blight, you were you um, would be Revali. Revali. You had mostly bows. You had a, like a small sword. You had a ton of arrows and everything. Um, but that's and that's all you had. You didn't have your master sword. You still had your powers. So like you can still do a Burst of fury, which I did cheat a little bit with that. Um, but I like say, I feel like that's that's rude. By the way, that <laughs> it's like okay, you've beat the defined beasts, so you've already put the champions to shame. Now let's see if you're really better than them. Yes, so rude. <laughs> but it was so fun. Rude. It was fun doing it with what they had. <laughs> yeah, and like kind of like seeing what they went through and everything else. So granted, you beat them; they didn't. You're better than them. I'm sorry. Um. But it was it was cool to see that. Yeah. And of course, getting like you get a little more backstory with each of the champion as well. Um, one of my favorite scenes is actually a cutscene with Abrosa. Um, Abrosa, I always say that name wrong. Yeah. Um, where she's walking with Zelda, and these two travelers walk by, and all of a sudden, Abrosa stops, and she's like, "Who do you think you are?" And then the two travelers turn to the Yiga, mm-hmm. and she just straight up three hundreds them with a shield, <laughs> and then snaps her finger to make lightning on the other one, and it's just like. Oh, I love her. Like, <laughs> she I do is, love her, Bosa. She is just complete awesomeness. Goals. So I, goals. I, I love that part. I okay. love those things. Um, I think I know the answer to this one. What is your least favorite part? Rain. <laughs> I, I think that's everybody's. I hate it. The rain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not even just thunderstorms, just rain. No, well, and especially, yeah, the thunderstorms I didn't care about. The thunderstorms were no more irritating to me than the rain. Okay. Because I it would just, I would change into not metal stuff yeah. and then I'd be fine. Um, But no, the rain was so annoying because I was determined not to fast travel for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, Which like when I got to later parts in the game, like when I was doing Terrytown and stuff, like I definitely fast traveled mm-hmm. um, for that part of the game. But like for the whole, through the point when I got all of the Divine Beasts, I don't think I fast traveled at all um or very 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 minimally like if i was about to drown (laughs) in a river or something um but yeah so i would be you know climbing a mountain chasing after a shrine beep or something and i'd be halfway up the mountain and it would start raining it's like (laughs) okay i guess i'll just literally i would like set the controller down without pausing the game and like go get a snack and be like okay i'm just gonna wait until it stops raining because i'm not gonna fast travel somewhere else and do something different i'm halfway up this mountain i'm gonna keep climbing it. i'm going after this shrine um so i didn't like that the my least favorite like game part that i did was you remember that like i don't know if it's an island or like a random thing where it's all in the dark oh that's that's, uh, inside a forest yeah yeah, so you have just your little torch or mm-hmm. your flame blade or whatever it is that you have. Mm-hmm. But if you need to fight something, you lose your torch and then you have to go fi- – oh, that was very stressful I think this is the, the one time you actually handed me the controller. I did, so I did. so upset. And then, I got frustrated. And then I had to fight the high knocks that it is in there that you have to face to get the, the shrine that you wanted. Yeah, I did not. I did do that. I remember doing that one. That's why I knew it was there and I knew yeah. you were to struggle. So. I really, really hated that part because what, what got me frustrated enough to hand over the controller, which was this was the only part, which if you know how I play video games, which you guys don't, um, I am very – big on i'm frustrated (laughs) ryan beat this for me (laughs) so i can go back to enjoying this game yes um and that was the only part in this entire game playthrough that i did hand the controller over i did everything else by myself in this one um which doesn't sound like a brag but like for me it's a brag (laughs) um but i got so frustrated because i fell into like a mud pit oh yeah and i drowned and i lost my torch and then i couldn't find every time i would like come back up i was like still on the edge of the mud pit and i couldn't figure out how to get (laughs) out of this freaking mud pit (laughs) because i couldn't see anything and i didn't have my torch um so yeah that was the part where i finally got frustrated enough um what about you what parts did you not enjoy so much about the game i would probably have to say the desert overall because no matter what you did, you can have the full Gerudo outfit. You can have even the jewels to wear to help go against the sun. It gets so hot, you still lose health. Yeah. And then you still have to fight like the what is it, Moldugas, the mm-hmm. giant worm things. You can fight regular bad guys in there as well. And there's like a fairy fountain out there that you have to get to. Um, and then all of a sudden, 
it gets nighttime and you have to put on your winter gear because yeah. it got that cold. That's true. So, which is which is I mean, it's legitimate. Cool. Yeah, it is it's really cool. cool. It's very like spot on truth, but like it's annoying to switch back and forth. It's still like taking damage because it's just so hot out there. Yeah. And then you're trying to fight some savage bulbicans and mobilkins, whatever they are. And or even the Moldugas by themselves. Like you're fighting Moldugas and you're just like, I'm losing health because it's too hot and you're just attacking me. Okay, I'm just gonna run. Yeah, if you eat food, it helps. I know it too. does. Like you can I, I think and I could be wrong. I swear though, there was a part of the day when it was super hot and I had my whole Gerudo get up on and it was still losing hearts and mm-hmm. I ate some chili something and it did stop okay. me from losing hearts. Okay. So but I mean that's super annoying. Yeah. That's like, you know, trying to run around the mountains without your snow gear and trying to just eat food every four minutes. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like it's it's annoying. Yeah, yeah, I get I get you. Um I already asked this one's already been answered, but favorite power of the champions, um, which obviously is Ravali's game. Yep. Um <laughs> But what is your favorite divine beast? Yeah. So when when I say that, I mean like the like whole the puzzle, beast. the whole yeah. puzzle, and then we'll and then do the Ganon. the Ganon blight. So we're talking about the puzzle first. Puzzle first. Okay. Puzzles. I really liked the um, salamander one. The fire one. Yeah, the yeah. fire one. Va Rudania. I wrote it down. My notes <laughs> I never learned the names of them. Um, but yeah, I liked that one a lot, which uh, sounds counterintuitive to what i just said because i hated that part of the game where it was all dark uh and the beginning of varudania if you yeah. remember it's oh, all yeah. dark <laughs> that was a smaller <laughs> but it and wasn't the whole part either. of it you're not getting attacked by anything exactly it's just a puzzle of trying to walk around and figure out um you know what where you need to go what you need to do um but i thought there was a lot of really cool elements to the puzzles in that one mm-hmm. um and then also Bob meadow the okay yeah um the Rito one, bird yeah. one, the Rito. I really liked being able to like whoo, to tilt mm-hmm. the bird in different directions and like the little pulley systems that would go and then like the fact that you could go outside and like just use the like wind gusts to like mm-hmm. float really far up in the air and, and get to different parts of the of the beast. I really liked that one yeah. too. Um if we're talking Ganon fights, I really liked the wind blight. That yes. was really probably the only one that I had fun with um the water blight and the fire blight ones were okay Mm -hmm. i didn't hate them i didn't love them they were fine Mm -hmm. um thunder blight ganon and the camel i hated all of it (laughs) well to even get to the camel it's so difficult because you're at the you're with uh what's her name riding on the the seals yeah that's true and i kept getting outside her like tiny little she wasn't she was not she was too slow and too fast yeah, at the same time. Yeah, too slow for you to sprint with the seal too fast for to you. To go regular speed. To go regular speed, yeah. Which I'm sure was by design to make it actually challenging. Yes. But yeah, that whole part, everything about it except for the power that you get in the end. So getting Urbosa's Fury was a good reward. Mm-hmm. But everything about getting it, I really, <laughs> really hated. Yeah, I will I will concur. <laughs> um, my, my hatred to the Thunderblight um is there uh, i don't have an issue with him now just that because was one I've, of the first times i ever saw you rage quit a zelda game I, was I your was. first yeah. playthrough when you were trying yeah. to beat the, the thunder um, but now like i i like i said i played him a couple more times now and i don't have an issue with him and even when oh, i yeah. do like the secondary battles as the as the champions i don't have an issue with him mainly because i can use a bosa because you can be your bosa but which um is awesome but I will agree with you. The Rito one overall is my favorite. The Windblight Ganon is fun. Super fun. Um, just to kind of float in the air and get that timing right mm-hmm. into his eye. Um, the water the water got annoying after a while. Like the first time I did the water one, um, especially for the Blight, I, I must have just got lucky and beat him because then like I played it through him a couple other times and it's just like, man, this guy's a lot harder than it was last time. He was supposed to be the easy one. Um but no, I agree with you. The Rito, um, Va Ruda, I believe. Va Meadow. Meadow. Va Meadow is my favorite one overall. Yeah. Um, what is the coolest weapon you got found? Ooh, this is a good question. I had a lot of weapons that I really, really enjoyed. Well, I did get the Master Sword. Um, mm-hmm. Good. And it was super easy to get the Master Sword for me. Because <laughs> you had Because all I it. had gotten a million shrines. Like, literally, by the time I made it to the Korok Forest... My very first attempt to pull out the Master Sword, I 
got it out. Yeah. <laughs> so I had enough hearts. You learned from my mistakes then. on that one. So yeah, well, I knew I knew you had to have a ton of hearts. I didn't know how many exactly, but I knew you had to have a bunch of them because mm-hmm. I had seen you die doing it or whatever, pass Almost out that. and lose. Yeah, um, yeah. So I had that, which was pretty cool. But as far as like actually like interesting weapons that rocked. Guardian swords. I mean, that's not that interesting, but mm-hmm. that was like my go-to weapon was I mm-hmm. had a lot of guardian swords. Um, I really liked the like duplex bows okay. that you would get from the Yiga. Because mm-hmm. you can shoot multiples. Because you can shoot multiples. And so I would just load those up with bomb arrows. I used the bows more than I used any other weapon in Same, the game. honestly. Um, I did a lot of fighting from a distance. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry if this is coming through on the audio. We have our puppy upstairs crated trying to get him to take a nap and he's <laughs> awake and he's crying now. <laughs> poor baby um but yeah i don't know that i had a ton of like really interesting weapons i mean like i got the thunder blades and the fire mm-hmm. flame blades and um i always had like a cobble crusher on me to make sure mm-hmm. that i could break rocks because i really really liked hunting mm-hmm. for for gems i yep. did a lot of that um but yeah, did you find any super cool weapons? I mean, love the master sword, love the guardian sword. Yeah. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the two handed weapons, no, though they same. were cool. Yeah. Um, the spear, I like the spears better than the the big, um, weapons like the cobble busters and everything else. Yeah, but you can't break the rocks with the spear. No, but you can break it with other things. Yeah, like you can that. have the bomb, but then it blows the gems off the True. side of the mountain. But I, mean, I always <laughs> made sure I had something, um, that could break up rocks. I always made sure I had that. Um. And like I said, I, I agree with you. The bows are way better. I loved um, the Forest Dweller bows. Yeah. Well, that was a three-shatter, right? Yes. The Forest Dweller blow. Yeah, and you can even find, I found one, one that was actually, I think I think it might have been more, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, three was the most I found. Yeah. But, like, those are just fun to, to because you're only technically using one one arrow, but you're shooting off right. three. So, like, when you're facing anything big, like, you just, you just go, go to town. Them. Yeah. yeah. No, that was great. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I, well, and things I always had on me, because I said I always had the cobble crusher, and you commented that it was interesting. I always had a torch. Yes. I so, never carried a torch. Yeah. I always carried one because there were those little parts where you have to light, you know, when you're at Kala Tech Lab and Hatno Village. Mm-hmm. You had to light all the lanterns, yep. and then there was always like those dark missions where you needed mm-hmm. something. Um, and so I learned my lesson pretty early on, and I just always had one of my weapon slots. Was well, you a had torch. 133 Korok seeds, so you had plenty of extra <laughs> spaces. For I did, weapons. I did. Yeah, I never had an issue. <laughs> I, I mean, I was always full on weapons, but I, I rarely had to like pass up on something really good just because I yeah. didn't have a spot for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what's something that you would actually change about this game? I think I might know. Cough, rain. cough, rain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if I would change it even. I mean, I hated the rain. Like, seriously, it made me so frustrated. But it was an interesting element of challenge. Yeah. Um, like, if we take away all the things that make a game difficult, then it's not, it's not fun. fun anymore. Yeah. So I get that. Although I, I'm not sure how much more fun the rain makes it. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of just an annoying challenge. <laughs> um, Something I would change about this game. I think I wish there, and I know David has mentioned this in episodes too, I wish there were real temples. That actually was my next question. Oh. You, you can go for it. Uh-huh. Go for it though. Um, no, I just wish there were real temples. And honestly, the Divine Beasts scratch that itch a little bit. Yeah. They're pretty complicated. Some of them took me quite a while. Like um, that stupid camel with his like <laughs> rotating tummy that took me, one, well, especially my determination not to cheat. It took me so long to to beat that camel um which maybe that's embarrassing maybe people are listening like what that was so easy but it was not for me all right (laughs) it was hard um but yeah i mean i wish that there was maybe even like optional temples like Mm -hmm. like where the mazes are like instead of a maze maybe and maybe you get something super cool for it like there's three of them and you get a super awesome armor set yeah like the original Link armor set, which is that something you can find in the game? Like the green? It is. I think you have to get all your shrines. You get that outfit. Oh, shoot. Well, I didn't do that. Um, but yeah, something something cool like that. Mm-hmm. You do, you know, your three big temples and you get three awesome armor pieces or whatever. I think that would be cool. I really hope that in Breath 2, 
mm-hmm. they bring back. Because I assume there won't be divine beasts to conquer in, in the next Breath of the Wild game. I could yeah, be wrong. I know nothing know. about what the gameplay is going to be, obviously. Oh, the game. Um, they know. And n- well, this yet. is it. Nobody's <laughs> released what it is, as far as I know. Um, but I think it would be cool if they brought back. I know the shrines were like broken up little pieces of temple, which mm-hmm. was cool. And I did like having a bunch of little, like varied um, little puzzles. But um, yeah, I missed temples. I think I missed temples a lot. Okay. Uh, for myself, I would, I would probably change the final battle with Ganon. Oh, really? I told you this after you did beat it. Yeah. To me, this was the easiest. Fight. Well, I beat it by myself without help, so yeah, it was probably pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably pretty um, easy. I mean, there's only you only have the two stages, and like the first stage, especially if you have all four divine beasts, like it takes away half the health, and then yeah. you just you can go. I just hack slash, hack slash, yeah. Boros Fury, bomb arrows all the way through, mm-hmm. and everything else. I can get through that, and it's not difficult because no. half the health. Well, the, gone. Yeah, well, I guess bomb arrows. I didn't yes. really hack slash, but yeah, it wasn't. Um, I didn't have to use any sort yeah. of uh, puzzle to. And beat then them. Yeah. yeah, and then in the second half, when you're on your horse. Um, I think the only way that made it difficult for me was I tried using the bike and it's not not good to not use the bike. Use a regular that. horse um, and you just have to shoot the spots and mm-hmm. that's it. So it's like there it wasn't a whole lot there to just No. Yeah, I was nervous challenge. for that second half mm-hmm. because I am so, – I, I got a bunch of horses. I got the giant horse. Like I like mm-hmm. sneaking up on the horses and, you know, feeding them apples and making them love me. Yep. And then taking them to to the stable. I did enjoy that part of the game, but I never rode them in the game because I'm very bad at riding the horses. They go (laughs) in all kinds of directions and I I just really hated it. I didn't ever really even like using Epona in the the original or earlier games. Um, So I was very nervous for that part of the boss fight. And you're right. It was still easy. And I was shocked that it was easy for me because I was not anticipating it being easy. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I was was the one thing I probably would change because even other games like Ocarina – Twilight, I do have an issue with the final, final part of, of Ganon when you're fighting Ganondorf because I think it's, it's just like you just have to push the button at the right time type mm. situation instead of actually like timing it right. Yeah, it's like a Shadow of Mordor type yeah. disappointing end battle. Yeah. yeah I feel um, like. But like they they also had more to it at least than this one did. Like I expected the final fight to be more to it. Yeah. Um, I can see that. Yeah. Going back to Shrines, did you have a favorite by chance? I did not. So that was one of the things that like I was guessing you were going to ask. So I like wrote down a bunch that I knew I liked. <laughs> um, and I'm probably forgetting some that I really liked because there was a lot of shrines. That yeah, I, there, was there, like, I mean, there's Ooh, a, this is really fun. Um, there's quite a few. The Dueling Peak shrines. I really liked those. I cheated um, on those. I cheated, but not the same way you did. Yes. I cheated by taking a picture with my cell phone. But then I realized <laughs> that's not really cheating because I could have taken a picture with, with the camera, which yeah. is probably what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, I just didn't think to do that. Um, but I thought those were really fun. I actually liked any of the ones where you had to like figure out the puzzle of where you need to put the little glowy balls in like mm-hmm. which little cavities, like ones where you had all the constellations yes, on the wall one, yep. and you had to figure out which one. Um, I liked those too. I really liked the sand seal. I did that the shrine. first time I did it. The first time I played yeah. through, I did that one. I wasn't anticipating that I would have to play through. It was actually a pretty easy race yeah. because I did the race with the guy at the horse place at... Oh, I forget which stable it is. Oh, yeah. I remember you doing raced, that Yeah, one. you remember you, watching you, me. You I raced quit him. That one. Oh, my God. I probably spent like a thousand rupees racing this man. Yeah, and you and rage quit that one, too. I did. I was like, you know what? I'm done. Um, so I never <laughs> beat him. So when I got to the sand seal race, I was like, oh, this is going to be the worst. And it really wasn't. I beat it the first time. Okay. Um, so that one was fun. I don't know if you did the Lost Temple, um, where really the shrine, I think, is a it's just a gift, I think, or like a blessing. Okay. I don't think you have to do anything. I could be wrong. I don't really remember um, fully. But to get to the shrine, like it was one of my most challenging. I'm just following the beeping, mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to find the shrine because I was like up on top of this thing and I'm like running around and like the beeping's <laughs> getting louder and then it's getting quieter or like whatever and faster and slower. And I'm like, where the heck is this? And I had to like go all the way off the edge of this cliff and go down into this like underground temple in the side of a mountain. Yeah. And inside that temple, there was like 20 guardians. The little ones though, right? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they're they're oh, in the oh, ground. I do know this one. None of them were moving, I don't think. I think yes. they were all in the ground. I then, do know this one. I did this like, one. Pretty much you just like 
chaos run, or I did at least, you just chaos run through the whole place to get past them. Or like, I think part of it, you're on your glider, whatever, Mm -hmm. um, to get into the shrine through. So this, there's actually a meme for this one. This is the meme where you're doing a selfie of Link and he's just going, ah, and all the lasers are pointing at him. Uh, And that's how that feeling you get. Yes, I have You just feel like you're doing good, but really life's about to get you. JK. Yes. Yeah. That's that meme. I did see that meme. But yes, so that one was kind of fun. And that was actually one of the few times that... um, early on or early-ish in the game that I did teleport because oh, yeah, once you came I out, got you into the shrine again. and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to go through <laughs> that again. I'm just going to leave. Um, but I thought that was really fun. And then um, there was that one shrine where you had um, all the fans and you had to change what oh, yeah. angle they were mm-hmm. so that they all blew in like a serpentine pattern yep. kind of thing um i i really enjoyed that one was kind of puzzly and fun mm-hmm. and then all the ones that involved electricity okay. where you had to like set the boxes down and mm-hmm. like make the current run through and light up certain things um those ones like i said my favorite part of zelda games and of video games in general is puzzles i'm not mm-hmm. so much for the combat i'm much more a puzzle person so yeah. all of those ones i found a lot more fun mm-hmm. so what about you do you remember any particularly fun shrines <sighs> again i don't it's been a while since it, it's been a while played, since i yeah. played but like the, all those ones that you said i remember all of them mm-hmm. so um and they're they all i mean i i don't have a, a, a least here. i i do love the um the test of strengths i think they're oh, fun. Um, i don't just because <laughs> i did get really good at the flurry attack yeah. so only, one i struggled at is when they had the giant axe and assuming i always yeah. do it early because i'm terrified to get no because one hit with that axe and you're yeah. toast yeah. so i i do love those the, the test of strengths i like the minor test of strength. oh yeah <laughs> well but I, I do like the test of strengths for the fact that it's like oh sweet mm-hmm. now i can break some of my less liked weapons and just get a bunch of guardians <laughs> yes yes i did like that it was like a weapon replenishing round pretty much yeah yeah um my last question um, and I, I wrote this down and I'll explain is quote, die on a hill feeling. So <laughs> what? what is the, the thing you have about this game that you will die on a hill? You will fight oh, no matter who, no matter what anyone else says on. that no matter what anyone else says, you, you stand by this. Well, I want to hear your answer first. Cause I don't. I don't quite understand the question. I mean, I do understand the question, but like I want to so hear an example. So my first. Di- my hill that I'm dying on is Link and Mifa oh. belong together. <laughs> uh, that is my die on a hill. Okay. I will fight anyone. That is the ship of all ships for me. So, yeah, yeah, um, you do love Link and Mifa. Mifa yes. and Link are cute. But that's, I mean, that's it. That'd be like crazy something about like the gameplay or something like that. It'd just be story as well. Like, so what would you die on a hill for? Um, let's see. I don't know if I have anything because, like, I didn't get any of the memories. So, like, I don't mm-hmm. have really strong feelings about the plot of 100 years ago, honestly. <laughs> well, hopefully that help that will help in, you know, later this year with that new game coming yes, out. Yes, I am excited about yes. that because I think that will be very cool. Um, I don't know. Sidon is the coolest character. I love this. I, 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 love I, I will, I will fight you on it. Ching, yep, that whole smile, smile and everything. <laughs> I do love him like a whole lot. Um, yeah. Let me think. I think that I don't, I'm not sure if I have a really die on a okay. hill. I, mean, I think the thing that I find most fun about Breath of the Wild is that I don't have that, if that makes sense. And I'll explain a little bit is that the whole purpose of like why we did this episode, right, is that I think the fun thing about Breath is that. Anyone can play it in any order, can do however many or however few shrines they want. Mm -hmm. I honestly was considering um, not beating Ganon before we recorded this episode (laughs) because like I was still playing through and I didn't, I knew as soon as I beat Ganon, like I know you can go back in and still play, but I haven't and I knew I wouldn't because I already beat the game. Um, So I kind of considered not beating him because like you can not beat Ganon and still, I think, be a legitimate player of this game oh yeah because there's so much to do there's, there's so much to do there's so much i haven't done and i hear about it and i want to go and find it myself so like i found out about dark link armor and i'm like well yeah. i gotta find out where this is and go do it myself and then i heard about um 
what is it the town that you make um Terrytown. Terrytown. Yeah. i have not done Terrytown. Terrytown i did not know anything fun. about Terrytown it's until cute. celeste actually brought it up one time i'm like the heck is Terrytown? Yeah. And then, like, well, because you have to you talk to NPCs, yes, which is like Celeste's entire MO playing video <laughs> games. I mean, seriously, it is. She loves talking yeah. to NPCs, and without randomly walking around talking to those people in I think it's Hatno Village is where mm-hmm. they are, you you would never discover the no. Terrytown little mission, yeah. No. So, yeah, there, there's a quite a bit to do in this game, and like, no matter how how much you play it, there's always gonna be find something you find. It's it's very much Skyrim like, where like you just mm-hmm. keep finding stuff and new stuff and new stuff, so and you can do it different ways, even like doing the divine beast how which order yeah. you do it in stuff like that so and heck you can just go straight into yeah, i was gonna say you don't have to do all the yeah. divine beasts you don't yeah you can just go fight again i wouldn't recommend it yeah go friends, in there with your uh, just your short sign and uh, a twig and see how well you do <laughs> i've seen on youtube though that someone oh yeah i've seen people do it one that i can't fathom yeah no that, but yeah no i couldn't either mm-mm so that's it. That's those are my questions. I, awesome. And I again, like I, I love that we can play this game and have different stories and how we did it. So yeah, it's, it's very super fun. Cool. One of the most fun things about this game. So I'm officially a convert. I now appreciate Breath of the Wild. There we go. We did it. I will no longer say Breath of the Wild is my least favorite Zelda game, which is what I was saying for the last three years. <laughs> so so where is it now? Um, somewhere in the middle, probably. Somewhere in the middle. Okay. Yeah, it's still not like my favorite favorite because to me, it's not even like a traditional Zelda game. Yeah. Um. But it is fun. I did enjoy it. I had fun with the with the story, and I probably will pick it up and play it again. Now yeah. that I know the honestly, way that I, works for me playing. <laughs> honestly, it. when I picked it up to look at my uh, account for Korok seeds and shrines, I'm like, I want to play. I want to play. <laughs> even I can not even start over. Like I just want to like do where I am right now and get more stuff. So, yeah. um, so where can they find you on the socials and everything? Oh, on the socials, yeah. So if you wanted to follow me. Um, you can find me mostly on Twitter. Um, I'm at MJ underscore Kuhn. That's K-U-H-N. Um, I also, I do have a book that is coming out, a fantasy novel that's coming out fall 2021. Um, and you can, obviously I tweet about it all the time too. So any information you can find on Twitter, um, or I have a website, it's just MJKuhn.com. And you got Goodreads as well, correct? Yep. Yeah. And all the links are on there. So. Okay. Um, and then for myself, I'm also on Twitter. Uh, I am Rambo Coon, uh, K-U-H-N as well. And I also brew beer. So I have a few things with that. Um, I have a Twitter handle called uh, Wise Old Owls Brew. Um, that's all the stuff going on with what I brew. And I also do a blog um, on a website called hopbrewandblog.com. And different blogs I write about that as well. And then also keeping an ear to the ground for other things that might be coming. So and then mysterious. I know, right? And then for <laughs> um, for another Zelda podcast, you also have our the website, um, which are blogs and episodes. Um, that is anotherzeldapod.com. dot com. Another Zelda podcast. Another podcast. Com. On Twitter, the handle is at another Zelda pod. Ah, see, I got the next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and then on Instagram, it's at another Zelda podcast. As okay, well. so, so you can find us anywhere on the socials. We can debate. We can talk about whatever you want to talk. And I mean, it's always fun. And let us let us know what your comments are about this on yeah. different ways you Let played as well. Let us know how you played through Breath yeah. of the Wild. Absolutely. So, um, I guess it's that time. Yeah. We, we uh, honor our friend. <laughs> right. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, okay bye! bye.